Well, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. So we try to get started here. Right about that time to get started. So we want to welcome you to our Wind Energy Nice Bible study. Hey, Mama Anna, thank you for joining me on tonight. You're the first one. Don't forget to mute yourself now so that we don't hear your feedback. I am glad you took the time to join me on tonight. And we're going to wait for a few others. Let the music play to get our hearts and minds ready. And then we're going to start our lesson, and it's lesson 52. That means we have completed another year's cycle of the first five books of the Bible, titled appropriately the Torah, or the Greeks have interpreted it as law, as they translated it, but it actually is instruction. So God, Jehovah's instructions to his people. And since we have been grafted in in accordance to Romans, the book of Romans that Paul wrote, since we have been grafted in, then this word is also for us. So the more we study and learn this word, the more we will be able to do it. And so we are excited about uh, the opportunity that has been presented to us. And we are so thankful that we have uh, this social medium where even with COVID and being separated by great distances, nearly 3,000 miles, We are ecstatic that we are able to share with you these instructions that Jehovah has given us and that we choose life. And so as we choose life and not death, we choose life because we're going to be obedient to the words of the instructions of Jehovah, our Elohim. So. Thank you all so much for joining me. We're going to allow this uh, music to play. And while this music is playing, I want to remind you that this is lesson 52. So we have completed our second year of this cycle of study. This Sunday, which is the 25th, begins what is called Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of the trumpets for what is called the new year. And it is not the first month of the year, but it is the new year. So it's kind of like our fiscal year that many governments have a fiscal year, and this is the month of July. And so, so it is in Israel because the first month is the month of the festival of Pesach, Nisan or Pesach. Uh, and it is titled the month of Nisan, and that's when the month of Pesach, because Jehovah told Moses to tell the children of Israel that this would become their first month. And so we're just excited because it will begin Rosh Hashanah, then on the 10th day, this is the seventh month, 
of the Jewish year. And then on the 10th day is the day of Yom Kippur or the day in which the priest would go behind the curtain when the temple was standing, the priest would go behind the curtain and sprinkle the blood over the Ark of the Covenant to atone for all the sin that the nation had participated in. And so it began a new season for the children of Israel. And of course, on the 15th of the month, 15th day, I shouldn't say the 15th, but the 15th day of the month, then we began Sukkot which is in our calendar, October 9th, which is the Feast of Tabernacles or what we call Booth. And we'll be celebrating that on the 15th day of the month. And so remember that month actually began because it's based on a lunar cycle on our calendar, September 25th began the Seventh month. Remember the names of the months came from being in exile and bringing in other languages. But originally it was the first month, the second month, the third month, and so on. Just like the days of the week. The days of week of the week were the first day, the second day, the third day, and fourth day. And so these names, and especially in this uh, Western Hemisphere where we are, the names are really pagan names are basically pagan deity. And so we want to get to the understanding of those what? Set apart days that were set by Jehovah our God for us to come together to assemble ourselves before him. Him. And even though the temple is not standing, he said that those days were forever. So we want to learn these days because most people won't be looking at this Sunday as the beginning of the seventh month. But the Jewish people, those that are following the Torah, they will be they will be looking forward to it. And then they will begin their season of fasting as they get ready for Yom Kippur. And then they come out of that with the festival of Sukkot, the end gathering of the final harvest of the year. And they would pitch tents or make themselves booths. For it was to remind the children of Israel of how Jehovah took care of them on that time that they were wandering in the wilderness to learn more about Jehovah our Elohim and his instruction. So with that, we're going to shut this music down. Let me shut off my phone because I still got people even working here today. And this is one of those days. And so I hope they don't come over to remind me that they're gone, but they might. All right. So with that, we're going to get to our uh, share. We're going to pray and then get to our shared screen and our note for the night. And this is the 52nd lesson. However, there are two more chapters in the book of Deuteronomy. But of course, after the song, which we will go over on Shabbat night, which is Friday night, that was it. The rest of that would have had been written by Joshua or one of the scribes because Moses had gone up and died. He said, this is the final day of my life. After I give this, I'm going to depart from you. So he said he was going to go up to a high place and he was not coming down. No one was going to accompany him on that journey because he was not coming down. And so the people began to mourn and that began the book 
of what? Joshua, which began with the mourning, uh, the completion of the 30 days of mourning for the death of Moses. So with that, let us pray. Jehovah, our Elohim, I bless you and I praise you for this day. This is the day that you have made and we rejoice and we are glad in it. I thank you for this opportunity to study your word together for Shaul or Paul told us that we should what? Study to show ourselves approved. Study this word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Workmen not ashamed of our hire, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we have been given the Ruach HaKodesh or Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Now we yield these earthen vessels, fill us all the more with your presence. As we go and study this word, bring into our minds and our hearts, we free ourselves to receive all that you will say to us. Now it's in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so with that, we're going to go into our shared screen. It's not a long lesson because this lesson is only one chapter. Oh, my goodness, what did I do? <laughs> Let me get back to my lesson. All right. I hope that that is what you see. Yeah, I think that's what you should see. All right, so hopefully that's what you see is what I uh, have done. I don't know what happened with that, but in any case, we, uh, we're we going to go forward with this lesson. See, lesson 52, Vayele, Vayele, which means, and he went. Because in this lesson, we're going to see how Moses went to the people of Israel to tell them this final day of his life. So with that, we're going to go into a little brief introduction as I get into my slide presentation. And we begin. I hope this is what you are seeing. All right. So with that, let's begin. See, lesson 52 of 52 lessons. So we'll go over the song, which will be introduced at the end of chapter 31. This whole lesson, as you could see, is one chapter. It's the only lesson of the 52 lessons to get through the Torah that is only one chapter. In most years, it's read along with the song, which is the next uh, chapter in uh, be chapter 32, the song that Moses was to teach the children of Israel for them to be a remembrance of the fact that they were to obey all that Moses had instructed them to obey, but given a glimpse of the future, Moses then tells the children of Israel that they were going to be disobedient, but nevertheless, after all was said and done, Jehovah was going to bring them back together again. This would, of course, be under Yeshua, our Messiah, in what we call the thousand-year reign. So everything is in anticipation and preparation for that time. And remember, those that are still alive when that happens will be called up to meet those who have gone on to be with the Lord, meet in the air, and then all will descend on earth and be sitting under Yeshua, our Messiah, who will then do what? He will instruct us on his Torah, which he is the word that, as John said, the word that became flesh. So as believers in Yeshua, we say he is the word. So we go on with our lesson. The parasha, or the study of Vayale, and he went, recounts the events of Moses' last day of earthly life. Moses will say, I am 120 years old today, he says to the people, and I can no longer go forth and come in. That does not mean that he wasn't physically able. It means that he will no longer be allowed to. 
because he told them that I'm still as good now as I was when we started in all this, which would have been 40 years ago when he was 80. So he was still strong, but his time was up. And so therefore he says, I can no longer go forth and come. I will no longer go, you know, any further with you on this journey. And then he goes on. He transfers the leadership to Yahashua or Joshua and writes, or he actually concludes writing the Torah in a scroll which he entrusted the Levites for safekeeping near the Ark of the Covenant. Vayale concludes with the prediction that the people of Israel will turn away from their covenant with Jehovah, causing him to hide his face from them. That means that they will be what? Blinded from, them, from him so that they will not be able to understand, to see and understand their way. They will be like a person that is in a dark room. They'll be in darkness and they won't be able to come out. But also with the promise that the words of the Torah shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their descendants. So even with all of the things that the children of Israel had done wrong, yet and still the Torah was maintained under great persecution because they, ref they did not do, they were disobedient to what Jehovah instructed them to do. Moses addressed the people saying that he is 120 years of age on that day and he is not permitted to cross the Jordan River together with them. Instead, Yahashua will lead them and God will go before them and destroy their enemies. Moses summoned Joshua or Yahashua and told him to be strong and courageous for Jehovah will be going before him and will not forsake him. Moses gives the commandment of Hakel, the assembly, whereby every seven years during the holiday of Sukkot, which follows the sabbatical year, so in every, every seventh year, or the year of Shemitah, which means sabbatical, or that seventh year of rest, whereby every seven years during the holiday of Sukkot, which follows the sabbatical year, all men, women, and children would assemble, and the king would publicly read sections of the Torah. Now, we know that the, when the children of Israel went into exile and came back with Ezra and Ezra, the, the, the priest, began to read the Torah during this period of time. And so as he began to read, the people wept and cried and fell on their faces because they realized, just as Moses is going to speak to them, that after you have turned away from Jehovah, he will still gather you and his word will be in you to such a degree that you will turn back, you will repent and turn back to Jehovah, our Elohim. So let's get into chapter 31 and see what it is that uh, the Torah is explaining. Moshe, which is Hebrew, Moshe went and spoke the following words to all Israel. Chapter 31, verse one. I am 120 years old today. I can't get around any longer. Moreover, Jehovah has said to me, you will not cross this Yarden or Jordan because there's no J sound in the Hebrew uh, alphabet. Jehovah, your Elohim, he will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations ahead of you and you will dispossess them. Yahashua or Joshua, he will cross over ahead of you as Jehovah has said. So now it will be different times where Jehovah is leading and different times where Joshua is leading. So Joshua will be leading under the power and authority of Jehovah, our God. Verse four, Jehovah will do to them what he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land. He destroyed them. Jehovah will defeat them ahead of you, and you are to do to them just as I have ordered you to do. He says, be strong, be bold. Don't be afraid. 
or frightened of them, for Jehovah your Elohim is going with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Remember, the Messiah Yeshua said to his disciples that he would never leave, nor would he forsake them. Quoting once again, Devarim or the book of Deuteronomy, which Yeshua quoted more than any other part of the Old Testament or the Tanakh. He quoted from Deuteronomy. And what did Moses say? He said that a prophet will be raised up among the people like unto Moses, and whatever he says, you should hear him. And so Yeshua in his earthly ministry quoted many things that the prophet Moses had said. And this was to inform the children of Israel of who he was. And yet and still, they were blinded by sin and could not recognize the Messiah when he was walking the face of this earth. We go on. Next, Moshe or Moses summoned Yahashua, and in the sight of all Israel said to him, be strong. This is a continual utterance of Moses and Jehovah. Why? Because the people were so dependent upon Moses. Now, when Moses leaves and doesn't come back, they're going to have to fight that battle of faith in their minds. And this is what he was constantly instructing Yahashua uh, or Joshua, you have to be strong and bold, for you are going with this people into the land Jehovah swore to their ancestors he would give them. You will be the one causing them to inherit it. So you see that sometimes that the word will say that Jehovah is going to give it to you, and then he tells in this place, he says, Yahashua, Yash you're going to be the one that's going to lead them and what? Lead them into taking this land. So even though the land has been promised to him and that Jehovah said it is yours, you still have to fulfill what? That call that has and you have been instructed to do. So he goes on and he said, but Jehovah, verse 8, it is he who will go ahead of you. So you see, at one point he tells them Yahashua is going ahead of them. And then he's telling Yahashua and the people that Jehovah will be with you. So in any case, it is the understanding that you're going in under the power of Jehovah, your God. So you don't have to fear anything because if he has commissioned you for this job in your obedience, you are certain to fulfill it. And so this reminds us, even though uh, we have a different purpose and call in our lives, as long as we're doing that and we're listening to the voice of Jehovah, we will do those things that Jehovah has said we could do. Why? Because he is going to make sure that he watches over his word to perform it. So as we are obedient to what Jehovah has instructed us to do through the Ruach HaKadosh, then we will see the end of this battle. Like Paul will be able to say, my end is here. I have finished my course. I kept the faith. It is he who will go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. So don't be afraid or downhearted. Then Moshe wrote down this Torah and gave it to the Kohanim or the priests, the descendants of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah and to all the leaders of Israel. Moshe gave them these orders. At the end of every seven years, during the festival of Sukkot, in the year of Shemitah, which is the year, the seventh year, the year the land rests, when all Israel have come to appear in the presence of Jehovah at the place he will choose, you ought to read this Torah before all Israel so that they can hear it. Now, remember, there weren't books that people carried around. This scroll was all they had other than through their memory. 
And that's why the word is so important to us as disciples of Yeshua, our Messiah. Why? Because it is that word that we need to constantly keep before us because those are the instructions that Moses gave to the children of Israel. And even though they were going to come together and hear it read to them every seventh year, where well, this was to make sure that no one could say they did not hear the Torah. They were going to hear it. Now, they would hear sections of it every time they were to come to the temple for one of the festivals, or if they were to come to bring a sacrifice or whatever, they would hear some of the instructions that the Levites were trained to teach them, along with in the cities outlying all of the nations, all of the tribes. In their city, there were what? Surrounded in those areas were Levites whose purpose was to teach them the Torah. But on this occasion, they were to go, and then during the festival of Sukkot, they were going to hear the Torah read to them. He says, verse 12, assemble the people, men, women, and the little ones, and the foreigners you have in your town, so that they can hear, learn, fear Jehovah, your Elohim, and take care to obey all the words of this Torah, so that their children who have not known can hear and learn to fear Jehovah, your Elohim, for as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan or the Jordan to possess. Jehovah said to verse, verse 14, Jehovah said to Moshe, the time is coming for you to die. Summon your Hashua and present yourselves in the tent of meeting so that I can commission him. This is a very important thing. That's why we highlighted it because remember, the whole understanding of the children of Israel was that when Moses would go in the tent of the meeting, of the tent of meeting, they would see the cloud go in. So that was to let them know that it was, in fact, Jehovah that was speaking to Moses. So that when Moses came out and said, Jehovah says, they would trust that that is what had transpired in the tent of meeting. And so this is important. So uh, Jehovah says to bring Yahashua in the tent of meeting and the cloud will come over and so that the people will understand that commissioning Yahashua or Joshua as the new leader was under the order of Yehovah, our Elohim. Then he goes on, he say, Moshe and Yahashua went and presented themselves in the tent of meeting. And Yehovah appeared in the tent in a column of the cloud, the Shekinah glory. The column of cloud stood above the entrance to the tent. So there would be no doubt in the minds of the people that Yehovah was speaking to Moses and to Joshua, to Moshe and Yahashua. He was speaking to them. And when they came out, they would tell him, the people, the leaders, and the leaders would relate to the people, all oh, that Jehovah had spoken unto them. We go on. Jehovah said to Moshe, you are about to sleep with your ancestors. Now this is why they're in the tent under the Shekinah glory and Jehovah is speaking to their minds. But this people will get up and offer themselves as prostitutes to the foreign gods of the land where they are going. When they are with those gods, they will abandon me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Then my anger will flare up and I will abandon them and hide my face from them. They will not be able to see Jehovah because of sin. Then he goes on. They will be devoured and many calamities and troubles will come upon them. Then they will ask. Haven't these calamities come upon us because our Elohim isn't here with us? But I will be hiding my face from them because of all the evil they will have done in turning to other God. That whole, that's a, the hiding my face is a, is a sign that Jehovah will not be 
in their mind, they won't be able to connect with Jehovah because sin will have blinded their minds and their hearts from Jehovah. And so therefore, they will feel like he has them, abandoned them. He, then he said, therefore, write this song for yourself and teach it to the people of Israel. Have them learn it by heart so that the song can be a witness for me against the people of Israel. For when I have brought them into the land, I swore to give their ancestors land flowing with milk and honey, and they have eaten their field, grown fat, and turned to other gods, serving them and despising me, and broken my covenant. Then, after many calamities and troubles have come upon them, this song will testify before them as a witness, because their descendants will still be reciting it and will not have forgotten it. So they're going to turn from their idol idolatrous ways and repent. For I know how they think even now, even before I have brought them into the land which I swore. So Moshe wrote this song that same day and taught it to the people of Israel. Jehovah also commissioned Yahashua, the son of Nun, with these words. So Yahashua is telling them this. Jehovah said, be strong and full of courage, for you are to bring the people of Israel into the land about which I swore to them, and I will be with you. And so once again, we're going to, as you get into the book of Joshua, the same thing, be strong. In other words, on this journey, you have to do what is nitzavim. You have to stand. Paul said, having done all that you can do in the book of Ephesians, stand, gird yourself about with the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. So this is all something that was told to uh, Moses and then to Yahashua and also will be repeated in the book of Yahashua or Joshua. For you are to bring the people of Israel into the land about which I swore to them and I will be with you. As we conclude our lesson, Moshe kept writing the words of this Torah in a book until he was done. Now we highlighted that because you know that is a scroll. It's not a book, it was a scroll. And that's why he said that you ought to sit it next to the ark. Why? Because it's a huge scroll that is going to have all of this that the scribes and Moses has written during this journey through the wilderness. He goes on. When he had finished, Moses gave these orders to the Levites or the Levium who carried the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah. Take this book of the Torah and put it next to the Ark with the Covenant of Jehovah your Elohim, so that it can be there to witness against you. For I know how rebellious and stiff necked you are. Here, even while I am still alive with you today, you have rebelled against Jehovah. So, how much more will you do so after my death? So, the revelation of what was going to transpire, Jehovah has given to Moshe and to Yahashua. And they then are telling the people that this is. It's fascinating because you would think that they would be just lifting them up, but these are reminders to them that they need to obey and be obedient because it's like you're making a choice. You can choose to obey or this is what will happen through your disobedience. So it's not such a negative thing to look at as we must look at it as what? A warning of what? can come to be because he says verse 29 because i know that after my death you will become very corrupt and turn aside from the way that i have ordered you if your parents were to tell you i know you're going to do this the first thing that would come to your mind is no i'm not going to do that i'm going to make sure i don't do that so you see this was designed to remind them to do what the word says so that these things would not these negative aspects would not transpire. He says, and that disaster will come upon you in the Akare Hayamin, 
or the world to come because you will do what your overseas is evil and provoke him by your deeds. Then Moshe spoke in the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel, the words of this song from beginning to end. And so chapter 32, we'll deal with on Shabbat night. And that would be the song itself that Moses taught to the children of Israel. So now we've seen that from this point, after the song, whatever was written was most likely not written by Moses because he's already saying, I'm going to give this Torah to the Levites to put, you know, they would carry the, 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 the Torah on their shoulders, this huge scroll on their shoulders, so that they would always remember the words of the Torah. So we are encouraged to make sure that we listen to these we, we listen to these words of instruction. We take these words and we use these words to make absolutely certain that we do what the word of the Torah says do. Now, I know that in many cases, through this Western form of what they call as Christianity, they have basically determined that this is no longer important. Even though as we have gone through this now for two years, we understand that as those that were grafted in to all of the promises and the understanding of the Torah, we have the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, who is here to guide us into all truth. There is no separation between the Tanakh or what we call the Old Testament and the New. It is a what? Renewed covenant is what Yeshua came to do, was renew the covenant under the understanding that Messiah had come and that Messiah would return. And so the first aspect was what? The freeing of the spirit of man. So the spirit of man is to take in and listen and allow the Holy Spirit to direct us and guide us into the understanding of the Torah which will then help us to understand our present day situation or what we call the signs of the time. We'll be able to understand all of that because we can then direct the Holy Spirit who has come to do what? Guide us. We can then say that we are following after this word. So help us to get what? Understanding. Because in all of our getting, we were cautioned to get understanding. So help us how to understand. And as we understand, we are empowered through the Ruach HaKodesh to be obedient. So we can celebrate. Now, if, there, if the so-called Christian church wants to celebrate all of these pagan days, they should not do it in the name of Jehovah, our Elohim, because he told us, do not mix these pagan practices with what I am teaching you. He told the children of Israel continually, do not, when you go in this land, destroy all of those belief systems because you are to teach them the Torah. You are to teach them the way. And you cannot do that if you continually mix in pagan understanding and then say that that is in the name of Jehovah. It is not. So as we learn more and we get, get ourselves into the understanding of who we are and who Jehovah is to us, then we have more meaning and understanding about September 25th. This day we call Sunday. This Sunday will begin, an evening will begin the Rosh Hashanah or the blowing of the trumpets for the new year. And this new year is the seventh month, on the seventh month, on that particular day, first day. We blow the trumpets and as assemble the people together. And as you heard on this, our lesson for the day, it is on during the festival of Sukkot that Ezra, in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, read the scroll and the people fell on their face because they did not understand they had been in captivity and 
The scrolls weren't there. Some, maybe one or two scrolls, but the full Torah was not there. But upon return, they were able to hear Ezra begin to read the words of the Torah and they fell on their faces because they realized that it was through disobedience that the land had been taken, the temple destroyed, and they were commissioned to come back and start fresh. So thank you for so much for joining me. Let us pray. Jehovah our Elohim, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit that comes to guide us into all truth. We thank you for opening our hearts and our minds to receive your word. We thank you for guiding us as we study this word and bringing us into a fuller knowledge of who you are and who we are in you. We thank you for the strength to be obedient to all the words of this Torah, for we choose life and obedience and not death and disobedience. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, we pray. Amen. All right. Shalom, everyone. I will see you on Shabbat night for our, the going through this song. And that will be our final lesson for this cycle. Now, remember, it's on the eighth day of Sukkot that the reading would take place. And so we will begin all afresh during that week of the eighth day. Shalom. Oh, let me get to my shared screen so I can see it looking at myself. Shalom, everyone. I will see you on Shabbat night for our Shabbat night service.